As a preface, you should write down to divorce wife when she is in menses. That is not the proper way. That is bidah. Because a divorced woman has to wait for three menses period. Now that period would be counted either or not in which he has divorced her. A part of that is already passed, maybe even one day or even one hour, but a part of that is already passed. And she is supposed to wait for three months' period. Now this menses in which he has divorced her, that is counted in three or not, if not, that's a zulm and a wrongdoing to the woman. You should write it. That's a wrongdoing to the woman. Because she will be waiting for three plus something. Yes? And if that is counted, that is against the text of Holy Quran. Because Quran says, That she is supposed to wait for three months' period. So now this one is not a complete, complete menses period, even if one hour of that is passed. Got it? Should write it like this. So that's why talaq or divorce in menses is against sunnah or that is bidah. Got it? Number two. Three divorces in different times are counted three near all four school of jurisprudence. Got it? I number 229 and 230. At-talaq the divorce is twice. Means they divorce in which return to divorce woman is allowed and permissible. So the count is say two. Attalaqo marratan, the divorce is twice by imsaqun bimarufin, after that imsaqun bimarufin, either you retain her or reasonable terms. Either you retain her, huh? say, on reasonable terms. Autasrehun bihsan, or release her with kindness. Retain her on reasonable terms, or release her with kindness. And it is not lawful for you to take from that which you have given them and that is not lawful for you to take that thing which you have given them means any gift. Any gift or bridal money. When somebody divorces his wife, this is not looking good. Oh, you know, on your birthday I have given you one golden ring. Give it to me back. Oh, brother. Oh, bro. Yes. Fala. <laughs> That is not lawful to you, Anta Hulu, to take Mimma from that Ate Tumunla, which you have given them, she and anything. Anything which you have given them. It's not looking good. If you have gifted her something, asking for your gift, bake, that is looking good. That is human character and that's a Muslim character. Prophet says in a hadith, that was your woman and that was your wife. If you have gifted something to a stranger and you became angry with, oh give me my gift back. Yes, give me my wa watch back. Or give me that thing of mine back. Prophet says, Al-Aidu fi hibbatihi. He is just like dead, dead dog, dead dog, 
who throw down something and then licking it again. Now look, what a beautiful example, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you when you will think about that, he has a dog, vomit it, and then he is licking it again. This is not good. وَلَا يَحِلُّ لَكُمْ أَن تَأْخُذُوا مِمَّا آتَيْتُمُوا نَشِئًا إِلَّا أَن يَخَافَ أَلَّا يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ But if they both are afraid of that they cannot establish the rules of Allah سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَلَى سُوَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَلَى سِدْ Then release her. Then release, do not retain her. Do not retain her. فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ أَلَّا يُقِيمَ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ Now this is another case. As we mentioned before, the case of Khula. The case of Khula. What we said, said about Khula and dissolution, the big difference between Khula and dissolution. Any one of you? No, don't say like this. The wording should be proper, like ulama and scholar. Now you people are no more students only. Quran is almost close to completion. Yes, so your wording should be like this. That Khula is based upon their mutual consent. Where the wife is asking for divorce. The wife is asking for divorce and she is paying something to the husband for that purpose and the husband accepted that. So in this regard we mentioned that all three school of jurisprudence, they say that there is no need of any court approval in this regard but only Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam Ahmad says it must be approved by the court so the husband may not take her back in a wrong way. No, there must be a document duly signed by the husband and duly signed by two witnesses. If the husband is making some trouble later on, oh brother, this is the paper. Got it? Fine, if to me, if you are afraid Allah, you came out that they will not be able to save this. Hudud Allah, the limits of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will not keep up with the limits of Allah. Fala juna khalema, that is not a sin for them both. Fima if the dad be. Fima, in that which the woman is given to her husband to release herself. Got it? Asking for khula. These are the limits of Allah. These are the boundaries of Allah. Subhan. Now look. Now this word, Ya Subhanallah, is very powerful word. Yes, if I will say, look, and I am a powerful man. And I will say, look, these are the limits of my legs. Yes, so I am threatening you. That if you will violate, you will see the consequences. Yes, if you will try to take it in the wrong way, you will see the consequences. And this is not a case of Sheikh Qazi. Not a case of any powerful man in this world. This is the case of Allah. The creator Allah says these are my limits. Don't make a fun of that. Yes, subhanallah. But people are not afraid of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are making a fun of the rules of Allah. Professor. Yes. Tilka hududullahi. These are the limits and boundaries of Allah. Fala ta'ta doha. So do not transgress it. Wa man yata'adda hudud Allah. And whosoever will transgress or violate the limits and boundaries of Allah. Fawlai kawmuz zalimun. Now this is a title given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our charge being put by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against such like people. Fawlai kawmuz zalimun. That they are the wrong doers. They are. So when Allah say wrong doers, so you cannot run away to Torah Bora even. Yes, Zalimun means that you are wanted. So if you are wanted, where you will run away? In Nahzahu Alimun Shadeed. وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ خُدُودَ اللَّهِ فَوْلَهُ This was the case of two talaq, which is called talaq rajai. Which is called talaq rajai. Now Allah says, فَإِنْ طَلَّقَهَا And if he had divorced her for the third time. If he divorced her for the third time. Two are already there. Two divorces are already there. He divorced her for a third time. فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ Then that is not lawful unto him. مِنْ بَعْدُ After that حَتَّى تَنْكِحَا زَوْجًا غَيْرَا Until she has تَنْكِحَا زَوْجًا غَيْرَا تَنْكِحَا زَوْجًا غَيْرَا The word زَوْج itself embodies the concept of marriage. زَوْج means husband. Yes. So there will be no any concept of husband or wife without a marriage contract. Is there any? Say Without marriage contract, we say that this is a pair, boyfriend and girlfriend. Yes, but when the contract is done, then we say husband and wife. This is a couple. Then we say what? Yes, before marriage contract, we say this is a pair. 
Then after marriage contract, say that is a couple. Before marriage contract, this is why friend and husband may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forget and forbid and protect every single Muslim male and female from these bad concepts. Yes? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word zawjan, which means something, which means, so that's why, unanimously decided by fuqaha and by all the scholars of ummah, that if a woman is divorced with three divorces, so there is no way, فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَوْ حَتَّى تَنْكِ حَذَوْ And only marriage contract will never suffice. No, sexual intercourse is must. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here used two words, tankiha. And number two, Zawjan. So Zawj means someone who has married her. Zawj is someone who has married and Tankiha. It literally, literal meaning of Nikah, you should write it. Literal meaning of Nikah is sexual intercourse. Fala tahillulaw, then that is not lawful unto him. Hatta Tankiha Zawjan gira, until another husband intercoursed with her. Until another husband intercoursed with her. Got it? So now, if three divorces are given in three different times, that is called Mughallaz, M-U-G-H-A-L-L-A-Z, Mughallaz, Mughallaz, there is a need of another marriage with somebody else, and sexual intercourse as well. Not only that marriage may not be conditional, should write it, nobody can put a condition. That actually the husband divorced her and uh, yes, you are a nice man and you are very pious man and you are very generous man and you are very kind and very cooperative and very helpful man. So please, if you can marry her and later on you will divorce her and it's not looking good. This type of speech is not looking good. And if somebody did it, it means nothing. That condition is null and why? You should write it. According to three school of thought, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi and Ahmad ibn Hanbal. You should write it. Imam Malik, say, Imam Shafi and Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahumullah. All three, they are of the view this nikah is null and white. They say this contract is null and white. Imam Abu Hanifa says, nikah contract is okay, condition is null and white. Nikah contract is done. Even though, if the new husband agreed to that condition, yes, I will. Yes, I will, yes. And later on he said, no, I do not. So nobody can force him. Nobody can force him. That nikah is a lifetime contract. Nikah is a lifetime contract. You put a condition against the very requirements of nikah. Requirement of nikah is a lifetime contract. And you are putting a condition. Tomorrow I should divorce her. No, I am not going to divorce her. So Imam Abu Hanifa Rahmatullahi Ali says, nikah is done and condition is say, that's null and white. But according to three Imams, that Nikah is null and white. Nikah is null and white. That Nikah is not done. And they refer to a Hadith and the same Hadith Imam Abu Hanifa referred to as well. Imam Tirmizi narrates, لَعَنَ اللَّهُ الْمُحَلِّلَ وَالْمُحَلَّلَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed the one who is making a divorced wife lawful to another one and curses the one for whom it has been made a lawful one. Muhallil is the second one. Muhallil lahu is the first one. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah has cursed the one who is making the divorced wife a lawful for the husband who divorced her. And Allah curses the one for whom the woman or the wife has been made lawful by that other guy. So both of them. So they said when Allah Subhanahu wa Rasulullah said, Allah has cursed both of them, it means that this nikah is not done. They say that this nikah is not done. But Abu Hanifa says otherwise. That if something is not done, so why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is cursing them then? <laughs> yes, Allah. He is a man. <laughs> he said the thing is not done, so why Allah curse them? Yes, they have never done anything wrong. Yes, that was only gapshap. Yes. If that is, <laughs> that is a useless word. Yes, the ultimate result is nothing. So why Allah curse them both? Number one. And number two, Al-Muhallil wal Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used the word Muhallil. The one who is making the wife lawful for the first husband. And the one for whom it has been made lawful. So now look at the word of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this nikah is done. That's why it made her lawful. That's why, Ya Subhanallah, Arhamallahu Abba Hanifa. 
professor yes you are lucky to follow imam abu hanifa got it got it or batted or caught it okay that's good that is good so anyhow now the only case remains here that is three divorces at once in different time that is done according to all but if somebody said to his wife i divorce you with the three divorces if he will say one two three i divorce you but he said one two three i divorce you or if he said i divorce you one two three or if he said i divorce you i divorce you i divorce you you know what i'm saying these are three words yes one two three i divorce you this is one talaq right yes. because the first one is only counting yes maybe he is memorizing the alphabets or the digits and the second one i divorce you one two three i divorce you one two so again that's one talaq that's one divorce because the counting one two three yeah, does not relate to i divorce you that's a separate jumla mustanafa and if somebody said to his wife i divorce you i divorce you i divorce you without end without end i divorce you and i divorce you and i divorce you got it but he said i divorce you i divorce you i divorce you got it now we will ask him that what did you mean emphasis what do you, what did you mean emphasis or counting that's your case with allah if he said counting that is three if he said emphasis that is one got it so he can say the same word 1000 time at once i divorce you 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 i divorce yes subhanallah yes did you mean counting yes that count is is useless because there is no any divorce after three yes so it means that he can say that no that was emphasis that was i was a very angry so i was emphasizing on that first word i divorce you so then it means one got it got it but if he said that i did mean three so then that is three if he said i did mean three then that is three and that is the madhab of all four school of jurisprudence divorcing one one's own wife three times at once that will bring him the curse of allah ayy imam nisai ne rate hadith mahmud ibn labid the sahabi radiyallahu ta'ala an his name is mahmud ibn labid He says that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was told that someone has divorced his wife three divorces all at once. So he says, "Fakam Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ghadban." When Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam heard it, he stood up very angry. He stood up very angry, and he said. ayul abu bi kitab illah wa ana bain azhurikum still i am alive you are making a fun of the book of allah still i am alive amongst you and you people are making a fun of the book of allah and because of such like anger of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam one sahabi he said to the messenger of allah afala qul hu if he caused you that much anger should i go and kill him because sahaba they were practical people causing that much trouble to the messenger of allah should i go and kill him sallallahu alaihi wasallam said hold your horses Yes, got it. Because the Hamba were practical people. Oh, he caused anger to the messenger of Allah. So, sir, keep quiet. Imam Karhi, Rahimahullah. He is an authentic Qatari in Fiqh Hanafi. In Fiqh Abu Abu Hanifa, Imam Karhi. He has written a very famous book in jurisprudence. That is called Usulul Karhi. That is called Usulul Karhi. So he was a scholar of jurisprudence. He says, "La alamu khilafan bin al ulama anna ikaat salasi jumlatan makruhun." That all ulama 
they are of the view that three divorce at once is a dislike practice. That is what a dislike practice. So that is a practice, that's why that is dislike. Means it happens, so that's why it is makru. If it does not happen, so then there is no any karaha, no any dislikeness. But only Ibn Sirin says, if somebody did it, that is not makru. Alama Qurtubi. You know Gardova. Yes. You know what? Gardova. Yes. Alama Qurtubi is a very famous Mufassir. He has written the Tafsir of Holy Quran in ten volumes. Alama Qurtubi. Rahmatullahi Alayhi. He has written that three divorce is, is one, uh, three divorce are three. Three divorce at once are three. That is the Ijma of Sahaba. That is what the unanimous decision of Sahaba. Ibn Kathir wrote the same thing. Who? Ibn Kathir. Imam Bukhari Rahmatullahi Alayhi He has written a chapter in his book Babu Man Ajaza Talaq Salas Chapter related to the saying of those Fukaha who say that three are three. Who say? Three are three. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala who divorced his wife. When she was in Memphis, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, Murhu fal yurajaha. Tell him to make a return to. Tell him to make a return to her. Ibn Umar did it. But later on he came and asked the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if I would have divorced her three at once. So still I was supposed to make a return to? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said no, there is no way to make a return after three. Ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he became Khalifa after the brutal murder of his father Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. So who became Khalifa? Hassan ibn Ali. He had his beloved wife Aisha Khasamiya. Aisha, her name was Aisha Khasamiya. So when Hassan ibn Ali, he became Khalifa. People gave their pledge to, pledge of allegiance. He came to his home. So his wife said, congratulations. His wife said to him, congratulations. And Hassan ibn Ali disliked it. He said, number one, that's a test and trial. You are congratulating me for a test and trial. Allah has put me to. That's number one. And number two, I got it after the murder of my father. So it means that you are rejoicing in the killing of my father. This is a time I may be condoled, I may be condoled and you are congratulating me. So he said, you are divorced, you are divorced, you are divorced. Got it? So later on, Hassan ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, her, her bridal money and 10,000 more dirham, bridal money plus 10,000 more dirham. So Aisha Hassaniya, she was a very, uh, she was a very eloquent uh, poet. So she said, Mata'un qalilun min habibin mufariq. The Turkari, Mata'un qalilun min habibin mufariq. Ya subhanallah, what a little hadiyah, what a little gift from a beloved one who separated from me. From a separated beloved, what a little hadiyah this is. And she sent it back. So when the messenger told Hassan ibn Ali that she sent it back and she said, Mata'un qalilun min habibin mufariqi. So Hassan ibn Ali, look, for a while he looked down like this. He said, if this would not have been the sharia of my grandfather, Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that after three divorces at once I cannot make a return to. 
so I would have returned. Confirmation. By whom? By Hassan ibn Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala an. Imam Bayhaqi, he narrated the fatwa of Umar, Usman and Ali, all three khulafa. They three divorce as one or three. Abu Dawood narrates from Imam Mujahid that Kana ibn Abbas in Yufti Bizalika. That was the fatwa of Abdullah ibn Abbas. So now look to the surah. Ya ayyuhal nabiyo, O the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam iza talaktumun nisa'a. Prophet was not going to divorce his wife. Prophet was not going to divorce his wife. He divorced only one of his wife. Her name is Sauda bint Zamaha radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Sauda bint Zamaha radiyallahu ta'ala anha. And that was also a raja'i divorce. That was also, say, a talaqi raja'i. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made a return to him. If he would not have done it, yes, we would have been not aware of Talaq Rajai. So the practice of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a source of law. Got it? So he did it and made a return to him. So here Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is addressing him directly that when you people are going to divorce your woman and your wives, so that's why we are putting a hidden word here. And that is, Ya ayyuhal nabiyo, O the Prophet, kulli ummatika. Say to your ummah. O the Prophet, say to your ummah. Iza talaktumun nisa'a, when you divorce women, fatallikun la, divorce them li iddatin la, iddiyan iddat and prescribed period. Wakhul iddata and count accurately their iddat periods. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ رَبَّكُمْ And fear Allah your Lord, O Muslims. لَا تُخْرِجُونَ لَا مِنْ بُيُوتِينَ لَا And do not turn them out of their husband homes. Let them spend the waiting period at the house of their husband. Yes? But depend. If that is talaq rajai, so let them be close to each other. Because Islam wants them to make a return to each other. But if that is a talaq bain or talaq mughallas, yes, so then tell the husband, you should go to motel. Don't come here for three wedding periods. Got it or not? You know what I'm saying? Because they are friends to each other. Yes. Nobody can make a bad intention to a strange woman. But someone, there's some time back, he was very friend to, so he can jump any time. So that's why Islam says, no, just go to the motel. We are West Los Angeles or East Los Angeles. Got it. La tukrejoon la min buyotin la and do not turn them out of their husband houses. Wa la yakhrujna illa ayyatina bifayishatin and they may not go out. Themselves, they may not go out. Let them spend their wedding period at the house of their husband. So now the first thing is, because in ayah there are so many fit issues. Number one, fatallikuhunna li'iddatihinna. فَتَلِّقُهُنَّ لِعِدَّتِهِنَّ Waiting period. So waiting period is based upon menses according to Abu Hanifa. And that is based upon purification times according to Jumhur. After menses, the purification period. So they say that عِدَّت is three purification periods. عِدَّت is Three purification periods. Abu Hanifa says, Riddat is three menses periods. And again, that is in reference to one and the same ayah. In reference to one and the same ayah. Surah Al-Baqarah. But now this is time. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu wa rasuli Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahabihi wa ma'in. Allah marabu alhamdulillah wa rasulillah 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 wa